Hi everyone, my name is Colin and we're going to bring you a little documentary about the World Trade Centers. Welcome back everybody to another Architectural Adventures episode. Like Colin has previously stated, uh, this is going to be a little bit different than the previous ones you may have seen. Um, well, we're going to show you something cool that you can do at the end of the video and that is a new One World Trade Center observation deck. Uh, we definitely wanted to give you guys a little bit better history of the World Trade Center with the 19th anniversary of September 11, 2001 happening today. So, enjoy. After hundreds of design ideas, Minoru Yamasaki, the architect behind the World Trade Center, finally settled on Twin Towers, a complex that eventually would become the world's tallest buildings. It is evident, even in these early concepts, that the former world's tallest, the Empire State Building, would lose its title to these two new icons. Both started construction in 1966. The North Tower, One World Trade Center, would be completed in 1972 at a height of 1,368 feet. The South Tower would be completed a year later, 1973, at a height of 1,368 feet. One and Two World Trade Center would be the first and second tallest building in the world at time of completion, taking the title from the 1,250 foot nearby neighbor Empire State Building. Though this title would not last for long, as in 1974, the Sears Tower in Chicago would take the title, rising to a roof height of 1,451 feet. The Trade Centers would stay as the tallest Twin Towers until their demise, at least by roof height as the Petronas Twin Towers are nearly 100 foot shorter at roof. They would also stay as New York's tallest building until their eventual demise. A large staple of the World Trade Center complex was the North Tower's radio antenna, which would reach a height of 1,728 feet, the tallest point in New York at the time. It would stay the tallest point in America until the Sears Tower's antennas were extended to give better coverage to a height of 1,730 feet. My youngest interaction with the Trade Center, my mom says I had my diaper changed in the basement of the Second World Trade Center. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, but the only time I can recall in my memory where I have seen it was uh, we flew into New Jersey for a um, family member's wedding and um, you could outlook the uh, international airport and see the World Trade Center in the backdrop and I just remember marveling at how big it was and like how tall the buildings were incredibly tall. Hi, my name is Andrew, host of Alpha Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about the World Trade Center, the original ones. Originally I'm from New York, Long Island, East Islip, and I took one trip to the World Trade Centers. Um, I remember going all the way up on one elevator, transferring over, going up to another one, all the way up to the top of the sky lobby. And I remember walking around the top and seeing this little part right here. It was just kind of an incline, like a little ramp, and I remember walking up to it. My mom telling me to stay close by, but of course I never listened to my mom. Um, and I decided to walk up along this ramp here and got yelled at for that. <laughs> um, I remember looking over the edges, seeing pretty much all of New York, all the other skyscrapers, the water around me the bridges. A lot of fun times. I wish I got to visit it again before. 
so here's the original schematic so this is the entrance here remember going in going into the elevators going up transferring over going up all the way to the top here's a pamphlet that you get when you walk inside yeah look at that look at that view it was beautiful I saw it in the daytime it would have been really neat to see it at night look at the view of the bridges going over to the islands here's a better picture going all the way to the top oh look at that I didn't even see that so this is just the pamphlet but it gives you a really nice look at the very top of it the sky lobby here here's that little ramp I was talking about earlier That's neat, man. Here's a ticket stub from the trade centers. Pretty much like any building, to get to the top, you needed a ticket. They were my favorite building when I was a kid. I, w I liked how they looked, kind of the architecture around the building. I always bragged to my brother that they were better than the Sears Tower because there was two of them and they were taller than the Sears Tower. But I've always wanted to see them. I wanted to go to the World Trade Centers and go look at the Sky Deck. Go see them in person, but unfortunately 2001 and changed that. So by the late 90s, the World Trade Center has really overtaken the Empire State Building as the go-to movie landmark for New York City. There is one movie definitely left an impression of the World Trade Center on me, and that movie is the 1998 Godzilla. And while this movie does get a lot of hate, it's still, for the time, remember, I was young, <laughs> six at the time that this came out, it definitely left the impression that these towers were large, and in fact... They show more than the Empire State does, as there's only two prominent Empire State shots in the entire film. The World Trade Center hangs heavy, and is definitely the landmark of New York City by this time. It is even more apparent, as the Spider-Man filming wrapped and a trailer was released, showing robbers escaping, but then being caught in a web between the Twin Towers. Unfortunately, this scene was cut as with any scene scrubbed of the Twin Towers because the film came out in 2002. What follows are pictures from summer 2001 of the World Trade Center and its outdoor observation deck, top of the world.
So, uh, Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, uh, I think just like anyone else, you can almost recall the exact moment right where you were, um, everything that was going on, the sights, the smells that day, um, I think it's just forever burned in your memory, you know, um, I was in high school at the time, uh, it was one of those weird ones, I was just waking up because I had the radio alarm going off and... Um, the radio was talking about, you know, these planes hitting the building and fires, but it was still, I was still in that moment of sleep where you're incorporating what you're hearing into it, so I thought I was, I was dreaming of it. I woke up and, you know, turned the TV on and it wasn't a dream, you know, there it is in real life right in front of you, and, um, at that time it was just the first building that was hit and, on fire and I remember you know waking up and right away yelling to my mom like hey World Trade Center in New York's on fire and like I think they said a plane had hit it and you know just the amazement of the, the smoke and everything and one of the towers on fire but it wasn't like the plane hit or anything. I was just seeing a lot of smoke. When I turned the TV on, and that's what the TV showed, uh, that was almost like what I was dreaming about. So we uh, continued to get ready for school that morning, um, watch, keeping my eye on the TV, watching the news, and that's when the uh, the second plane hit. I remember watching that live on the news with my dad and my brother. See that second plane. Yeah. yeah, so that morning I remember, probably just like everyone else remembers really clearly, and I assume that's something you hear traumatic news, it's, you just remember it. You know, people said that with the Kennedy assassination or Pearl Harbor. Uh, but Colin and I were watching SpongeBob at the time. And because we didn't have school, we were on the track system, so we were on like fall break. And I remember my dad running down the stairs really, really fast on the phone with my uncle Russ. And he took the controller, and we were a little mad, like, why, you know, we're watching that. And he changed it right when he changed it, like, it appeared like the tower, the north tower on fire, and that's right when the south tower was hit with the plane. And, um, yeah, definitely something that's stuck with all of us, I think. It was just so terribly sad, and I think as a kid it was hard to really kind of understand what was going on. Uh, you know, I just realized a lot of people just died. And, and you knew right then and there that you were dealing with something else. You know, it wasn't an accident at that point that you were under attack and then shortly after that to hear the Pentagon and then after that the um, the crash out in the uh, fields of uh, Pennsylvania just and um, in a matter of seconds just watching many lives disappear and I know we were sad watching that happen but I can't imagine what the parents the loved ones felt knowing that they lost someone in the trade centers or the Pentagon or Flight 93. I can't even imagine or even fathom what they were going through. It, it made it for, you know, uh, you, you, history right there, you know. Uh, you went, to, when we were at school, you know, every, every classroom had the TV on and every kid was watching. Uh, parents were coming, getting their kids early. It was, it was quite the, the time, you know. Um, again, something I'll never forget. And on that day, on 9/11, we were on lockdown, and I couldn't look at the Tivoli at the time or the Auraria campus. And the head person says, "No, you can't go to work." Because we're on lockdown. September 11th, 2001. I was 11 years old and I was sitting at the park where the school bus stop was, waiting for my friends to come home from school. 
and I remember the kids getting there and nobody actually knowing what happened and stuff like that. We were just playing. I remember when I got home, turned on the TV, uh, seeing the news, and at first I didn't think it was real. I thought it was some sort of movie that they were showing or something. <laughs> But I remember my mom coming home early from work. Uh, she actually worked for the school districts. And she was telling me, you know, that that really happened. And I was like, oh my. That's insane. I can't believe that something like that would happen here in the United States. How do you... How do you process that, you know? And then, of course, with the Pentagon and then the uh, Pennsylvania United 93 flight, and then later that night was the Seven World Trade Center collapse. It was, as a kid, it was just like, man, this is just going to keep going on and on. Like, it was terrible. Just for days being glued to the TV then, watching, you know, them pull out survivors. And, you know, it was heart-wrenching that, you know, the, the, soon the, the applause stopped. Um, you know, because they applauded every survivor they pulled out, and it got to be less and less and less. And a few days afterwards, you realize that, you know, at this point now, it's it's the uh, people who didn't make it that were still being searched for. But yeah, so definitely a day that I, I don't see how you could ever forget it. All right, guys, so I'm about to call my dad. Um, his girlfriend at the time was actually at ground zero the next day. Um, and we're going to talk about you know, some of the lizards that we passed out. And I'll just let my dad explain some of the things, because he remembers it better than I did. All right, this is my dad, Jay, here. Well, you know, it was Kim that came up with the design for a safety pin, also. Oh, the safety put, pins. I remember yeah, that. She made safety pins that they can put the uh, little, um, what do they call those? There were, uh, were flags, right? Well, yeah, she I, made I the, remember. the red, white, and blue individually, a red ribbon, white ribbon, and blue ribbon. Yeah. And she made those. That was first, so she was the first one to do the red, white, and blue ribbons. She also made the, a safety pin that you can, or her brother actually made it to where the pin would. I remember that you could screw the, the top of it off so you can put the beads on it. Right, put stuff on it. Yeah, yeah. like uh, little trinkets. What do they call Charms. They, they made charms, yeah. you know, of little fire engines and stuff yeah. like this. So it was like a charm thing. Um, and then uh, we started making those little um, lizards, you know, with the big pony beads, they're called. Yeah. Red, white, and blue pony beads that we got. And we made a bunch of, got maybe a couple hundred lizards. And we, when I flew back, or I'd give them to Kim, and Kim would give them to her brother, and Kim would give some out, I think, too. Yeah. Um, but she gave some to her brother, because he was accessible at Bellevue Hospital, because he was doing uh, a lot of the DNA testing to see the, whose bodies those were that yeah. they did find, even if it was just a part. You know, a partial thing, a bone or something. Yeah. Um, he did work on that. He's dead now, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry to hear he died, that. He had a brain tumor. Oh, no. And he died uh, probably 10 years ago. <laughs> um, but he, uh, yeah, he was in Bellevue Hospital, and he, he'd tie three or four on the belt each time. You know, walk around with them, so if somebody... Uh, approached him at the inside the hallways or something like that, or people would ask, well, "Do you know what a lizard guy is?" <laughs> and he would get pissed at it, but we just kept bringing him more lizards. <laughs> but he kept a journal of uh, each company that got one and, and things like this. So it was pretty interesting that 
he, he, you know, we got him to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a payback. We got him good. <laughs> Where's the lizard guy? You guys already got one. And a lot of the fire trucks would hang them from their mirrors and stuff like that. So yeah. I don't know if they still have them around or anything like that, but it was something. Kim worked down at the pile. Her last name was Hollowell. H O L L O W E L L. Kim Hollowell. And Ricky. Ricky was Hollowell also. And he worked, I believe he was working for. Uh, Suffolk County Police Department, uh, a lab, a lab guy, and so you know he, he was doing different kind of work, autopsies, and I think he was doing that kind of stuff. You know, uh, you know, and identifying, trying to identify who was who. Right. And, um, beyond that. You know, there was a lot of interesting things that happened back then. Kim would always get hats and shirts for me. I remember and the it, I remember the lizard hat. Was did Mayor Giuliani sign sign that? Didn't he? It, it was a World Series hat. World Series. Yeah, Yankee hat. Yeah. Uh, it had the PD and then the Yankee symbol, uh, which is NY, and then. The, the FD. I always thought the hat was backwards because we call it FDNY. Right. And NYPD. Right. So I, 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 I thought that they should always have reversed it. Should have been FD, the Yankee symbol, NYPD. But anyway, people didn't think that back then. I did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Rudolph Giuliani, he uh, signed the hat. I have a hat signed by Giuliani and Pataki and Clinton and Giuliani, Pataki and George Bush. Pataki was the governor at the time. Giuliani was the mayor of New York. And and uh, whatever, Bush was the president. So I have a hat signed by all three of those someplace. Don't know where, but someplace. And uh, just a lot of, you know, Kim worked down at Ground Zero for months. And she helped with the cleanup? Well, she didn't. She gave out gloves and candy bars and water bottles and shoes and whatever they needed. You know, at the, at the pile, she had like a table. And if somebody needed to talk to somebody, you know, firemen were really upset yeah. a lot of, lost a lot of their friends and so she was somebody that they could talk to which was nice yeah people needed it people definitely needed it right and so it, 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 I think it helped them and, and I think they were happy about it so um, but you know I never went down there but uh, Kim was working down there the next day. Yeah. So, she was in the air that day, by the way. Was she really? She was, she flew out of Kennedy to go to Albany, which isn't a real, it's a short flight. Right. But the plane was already hidden in the building uh, when she was in the air, I think, and they landed and she had to, everything got canceled. So she rented a car and tried to drive back. It took like 10 hours to go from Albany into Bellevue to see your brother. So it was a a long, a long drive when it should have been just a couple of, you know, two and a half maybe hours. Right. You know, instead it turned into a 10 hour drive. The bridges were closed and a lot of things were shut down. You know, when all that stuff happened. You gotta remember the buildings did collapse during the day. Yeah. You know, because you can see it all. But at night, she was coming back at night. She didn't get there until it was dark. Wow. But, uh, yeah, definitely an interesting time period. A lot of stuff was going on. About Ground Zero and um, how Giuliani got involved with stuff with Kim and 
you know, stuff like that. It was different. That's it. All right. Well, thank you for the interview. <laughs> You're welcome. None of it was about me. Maybe two pups. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. I would say our trip to New York in 2009 uh, definitely gave us the impression of the scar on the skyline and the city that this event had, and it really, really hit us. New York toy with my mom and... Me and my brother, we went to uh, New York and we saw Ground Zero. We went to the church that was not even a block away from it. I remember seeing the burn marks, probably the ash marks too, on the bricks of that building. And I just remember looking on the other side, just seeing the structure being built that is now the Freedom Tower. And seeing the walls and stuff with the plans and all that stuff. But then there's that guy. There's this guy that I fucking hated. And I'm. I hate to say it like that, but he was passing out photos of the building on fire, of the actual event happening, and he was trying to make a profit off of that. You don't do that. You don't. That's not ethical in my book. I know that made me and my brother very angry, and... We saw... The hole from where the World Trade Center stood. Here you can see the Dutch bank building uh, being taken down. It was damaged during the collapse of the Twin Towers and was deemed cheaper to tear down and rebuild uh, rather than repair. We went to the St. Paul's Chapel, uh, which was really pretty close to Ground Zero. And it housed a lot of pictures and artifacts of people that were missing, be it firefighters or workers or civilians or police. And you could definitely feel the energy there. It's overwhelming. And like Colin's going to say here, you can see the gates of where they're starting to build the Freedom Tower and stuff. But there's people just outside selling pictures of the buildings exploding and how that just angered us so much. Definitely shouldn't be doing that. Um, I'm Mark Cool. I'm a Special Olympian, and our unified softball team, uh, we went to, we had a chance to go to the international group, uh, games for Special Olympics, uh, and we represented Team Colorado, our unified team. And we won gold uh, first place for our state. Woohoo! And, uh, but anyway, we were going on to the Hudson River uh, on a cruise. And so our group, we didn't go into the museum, but we saw the beginning of it, and we got a chance to see the cross girders, the one, the girders that look like a cross, and then before we went on the ship. So there are numerous memorials across the entire United States. Personally, I have seen them in five different states first was Las Vegas, Nevada, which is not pictured, and the rest will be pictured and titled.
One World Trade Center started construction in 2006 and was finished in 2014. It rises 1,368 feet to the roof, matching the height of the North Tower. To the tip of the antenna is 1,792 feet, though to the top of the beacon, aka where the CTBUA, where the Council of Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat count to is 1,776 feet. Much like the old South Tower, it has an observation deck, which is at 1,250 feet. Many of designs were proposed to the lead up of choosing the Ground Zero rebuilding plan. Designed to be the safest skyscraper, and with safety implications in the stairways, including wider staircases. One World Trade Center, also known as the Freedom Tower, is a modern icon for New York City. Though the David Childs design was not the original Freedom Tower proposed, as you can see it went through multiple design changes throughout its life, or should I say pre-life, Currently, One World Trade Center stands as the fourth tallest building in New York City by roof height and fifth in the United States by roof height. Another early proposal was the Twin Towers 2 seen here, which would rise 1,485 feet to roof and over 1,800 feet to the tip of the antenna, making it the world's tallest at the time. So this is the, the new World Trade Center. Um, I thought it was a pretty neat design. I've seen a lot of pictures of it. I haven't been to it myself yet. I will one day. It is a pretty neat design. I really do like it, how it's kind of twisted almost. I've seen a lot of pictures and a lot of videos on it, and I really want to go visit it. The tallest building I have ever been in is the original Trade Centers. It'd be really cool to visit this one though. One day. One day. Live streaming 
canceled the MasterCard part, and I was like, $69? Oh, wait, oh. that's the VIP tour. Yeah, we don't need it. I'm here. I can tell you all about the architecture. You're good. Um, as you can see, Preston is currently buying tickets. Pretty exciting news over there. He's, he's super excited. Look at him. We're going to go up uh, Preston's tallest building. It's taller than me. It's pretty tall. Yeah. It's going to be like his previous tallest, the Empire State Building, which he had just seen yesterday. Just didn't even know I was in there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. You know, that's what they said. This is going to be me and Brendan's second tallest building we've been in. Here's where they're free, free boot clean. <laughs> it's a little advice. Watch our vlog. You get some advice from Preston about escalators. And boot cleaners. Oh, this is, this is cool. Can you explain to me the experience that we're having right now? <laughs> oh, oh, geez. Geez. Oh. Slightly, oh, that long, slightly huh? slower than this year's tower. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been up there. <laughs> so Preston, this is going to be about 100 feet shorter than my tallest, but that's cool. It feels like... Going up here. Oh good. There, there's, there's the church. Yeah, right there's the singer building. I am. What's up, singer? I'm sorry they demolished you. Hey, look at the feet count. I know. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, because we should be at like 1,250 feet. Welcome to One World Observatory. Yeah, see, there's the Columbia Center. We've been up. How big do they usually go through? What? How many people do they usually go through? Our group, I guess. See, we are in a group. Yeah, we made our own group. This is like the extended uh, bullet club. We just... I don't know what's going on. I'm actually a little a little worried right now. It's dynamic, diverse, and ever changing. The city and skyline reveal themselves uniquely to each observer. Experience the infinite facets of the city beneath us as you prepare to see forever.
crazy. They were sunk into the East River and men went inside it. There's the Three World. There's Three World Trade Center, Four World Trade Center. Our little hotel right there, courtyard. 40 Wall Street right there. The three towers. You can see Ground Zero down there. Oh, there's Brendan. There's Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Oh, there's Beekman. Statue, All right, so we'll zoom in. There's 432 Park Avenue. Uh, this guy right here, tallest by roof height as of the moment. Central Park Tower is going to be the tallest pretty soon. Uh, we got Empire State, got Tower of Air, got the Steinway Tower. Let's see what else we got. Got Chrysler building over here, Citigroup. Gonna have this nice little guy once he gets to his full height, 1,401 foot. Got your MetLife. Got your Hudson Yards. We'll go see the. Got Woolworth. Got former world's tallest way down there. Got Beekman. this everywhere we go. It's almost as fast as the Sears Tower elevator. Thank you for visiting One World Observatory. Three World Trade Center, large construction in 2010 and was completed in 2018. It rises 1,079 feet. Four World Trade Center started construction in 2008 and finished in 2013, rising to a height of 977 feet. Seven World Trade Center started construction in 2002 and was finished in 2006, rising to a height of 743 feet. Currently, quite a few people would question if Two World Trade Center will ever get built, as the two designs keep flip-flopping and the look is that five World Trade Center may actually be completed first. The choices between Big, Foster, and Partners have jumped back and forth, though it currently looks like Foster may have a redesign coming up. The optimistic 1,340 feet may rise at some point. Five World Trade Center 
has been a design so evolving not one can singly be picked out though one is posted at the site the exact type is rumored from anywhere from 500 to even maybe a thousand feet
All right, so if you enjoyed this architectural adventures and want to see more, click the link that's right up here. If you want to see more from us here at Cools Paranormal, click the link that's right here. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. But they're still better than Sears Tower.